I've heard that God is in the details, but we found the devil's there too. We're right there between the two of them, and the clock is ticking. We have a lot of decisions still to make, but in this episode, I thought I should go over a couple of big ones that we've recently had to make. I think the toughest thing about choosing the finishing touches on a house is being able to imagine what the house will look like. I've spent a lot of time staring at drywall, trying to imagine what color it should be, but I guess I should start at the beginning. Yes, we have drywall now, and the finishing team is hard at work patching the seams and flaws on the surface. We are at that point now where the rubber hits the road, or more appropriately, the brush hits the paint, and I hope we've made some good paint choices. Color schemes are real imagination stretchers. The first one we had to face was whether we paint the posts on the porch in the same black as the rest of the house, or maybe in that red-brown that's on the balcony, or leave it natural. And so I created a computer program, or really just a Photoshop diagram, to compare the differences. And that was useful. We decided to go with that red-brown from the balcony. But not only do you have to imagine what the house or what each room will look like, from nothing more than a sample of paint no larger than a thumbnail, but you have to imagine what the rooms around it will look like too. Because the paint will stay in one room, but the color will go all over the house. That is to say, when standing in the living room, for example, I can see into the office and the TV room, the master bedroom, the kitchen, the bath, and even the family closet, all from the living room. Each one has its own theme and patterns. Some will be painted, some will be tiled, and some will be papered in a traditional Japanese style, and all of them are visible. So there is just no room for mistakes. We decided to go with the accent wall concept in the office and TV room. That's when one wall is done in a dominant color while the others are more neutral. I think it worked with the blue paper in the TV room and it worked with the green wall in the office too. But the yellow kitchen was on the attack and that vibrant wall was the first thing we saw when we were walking into the house. We needed to back off there a little bit. The painters took the note and the wall was toned down by the next morning. Maybe it was tough on them too. The toilet room, or the WC as some people might call it, was also pretty obnoxiously blue, but we kind of like that. We still aren't sure about that color, but when we took our concern to Shimokasan, he insisted that the color would be fine. He usually doesn't insist, so either he loved the color or he really didn't want to do it again. Either way, we went with it and when the white toilet was actually installed, it worked. At least for us, at least for now. Upstairs we went with blue for the bath too, but a different blue. We had the perfect tile picked out until the company came back with word that there just wasn't any more of that tile anywhere in Japan. So I guess we were hit with the logistical COVID problem again. We were already running late with the decision, so we needed to come up with something else fast. My wife called a couple of tile suppliers and begged for some last minute samples so we could make some snap decisions that so far seem to be working okay. So the bath is moving forward and we even have thermo tile on the floor to keep our feet warm. And that thermal tile really works. Tile technology, I guess only in Japan. So now the tile we really wanted for the bath was unavailable, but a kind of greenish version of that same tile was available. So we thought that green might actually work with that vibrant yellow in the kitchen. 
We really weren't going for shock effect there initially, but once that other wall was kind of under control, we realized that a little shock might be in order. We still don't know what it looks like, but we'll probably know whether it was a good solution by the end of the week. The scariest part is not knowing. One of the most exciting parts of the design for me was integrating the Japanese design elements. The master bedroom is actually a Japanese room because I like to sleep on tatami mats. I don't like soft mattresses and the floor is anything but soft. So we went with tatami in the master bedroom and I added that tokunoma that I mentioned in a previous episode. And we made a shoji window that overlooks the open loft and extends our view out those large picture windows. Well, we haven't gotten the shoji yet, but we designed the room to really feel like a Japanese ryokan in the forest. I think the muted colors really hit the mark and that makes me feel good because that one was my labor of love. Speaking of the master bedroom, we had a set of lights custom made for the room, sort of. We contacted a light maker in Fukuoka in southern Japan and ordered several designs for the house. He made the stained glass fixtures for the living room and stairwell, the pendant lights over the kitchen island, and even the sconces over the loft and the stained glass sconce in the bath. He even made the light for the entryway. I love all of these lights, but my favorites are the sconces in the master bedroom. We asked him to make a matching pendant light, and at first he was reluctant. But he said since it was so important for us, he'd do it. He did, and it looks great. You never know what people will do for you until you ask. And with the installation of those lights, we are getting closer and closer to completion. It's hard to believe we've come this far and without a single delay so far. We're still on the original schedule that I thought was so ambitious when we broke ground just five months ago. But we're not finished yet. Everyone is just scrambling to keep up and we're mostly just in the way. But now more than ever, it's important to keep an eye on what is going on in the house.